are different problems that we face each day of our life. Is that right? Yes. yes. And uh, these mountains, they actually threaten you and they torture you and torment you. Might be a mountain of sickness, might be a mountain of finances, might be a mountain of relationship in your marriage, whatever, okay? But every such mountains torture you day and night. So tonight, God wants to teach us through his word how we can move mountains through Jesus Christ. And it's not only going to be a theory class, but after the class is over, there's going to be also practical uh, manifestations of people who are sick in their body. We will see them getting healed instantly by applying the truths that we learn this evening. So it's going to be a theory, and then it's going to be practical. Is that okay? Yes, yes. 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 Hello. Hello. You know, this morning, last night, I went to Swindon. Okay, and I don't know what exactly happened today. Uh, when I began to check the memory card, it was a recording of four days of retreat with healings and everything. And when I checked the memory card, it showed empty, and I began to wonder why. And then I found that by mystery, I don't know how, the memory card got formatted and all that was recorded was gone. Doesn't matter. God has every day new things. Amen? Amen. Amen. So what I'm going to share now is that last night when I went and I saw the hall was packed and everybody hungry for the word. So I decided to stay back in Swindon and teach the team members how to use a faith and destroy mountains, uh, not only in their life, but also in other people's life. So the morning we had from nine to 11, our uh, teaching on how to do it. And I told the people who are sick to please come from 11 to one and get yourself healed. So people kept on pouring in and I was so happy today that I did not have to do anything just stand at the side and watch everyone who had thought how to do it, beat up the devil and get the people healed. Amen. Amen. How many of you need some healing this evening? Kind of healing? Wow, physical healing? Any, anybody who needs physical healing? Yeah, there are, there are, praise God. Thank God, there are, praise God. So uh, the good news is let's go first to the theory, understand it, and then uh, we will write some notes so that what you learn tonight, it's very important that you also have notes so that when you go home, you can practice them. Amen? Amen. Amen? Okay. Let's close eyes and pray now. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are the great God and great are your ways. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, intervene in each one's life and this evening as you have brought us here, Lord, open our hearts and our mind to receive your word. That through the preaching of the word, the truth will be revealed, faith will begin to arise, and with that faith, not only we will be victorious, but we will be able to walk every day in victory and teach others to walk in victory as well. We thank you, we praise you, Father. Make this preaching and teaching absolutely easy to understand so that we can apply it in our everyday life. Yes, Holy Spirit, have your way. Take away everything that's going to hinder your people from receiving the truth. And I thank you in advance, Father, that what has been taught, you will also manifest your glory with, with signs and wonders accompanying the preaching and confirming the word that is being preached. We thank you, we praise you for all this. In the glorious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 So let's quickly go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 13.
Can somebody read it for me, please? It is written. It is written. I believed. I believe. Therefore, I have spoken. Therefore, I have spoken. With that same spirit. With the same spirit. Of faith. With the same spirit of faith. We also believe. We also believe. And therefore speak. And therefore we speak. Can you read that again please? It is written. Wow. The first thing is. It is written. Whenever Jesus was uh, tempted. He always used the word. It is written. Okay. It is written what? I believed. I believe. Therefore I have spoken. Therefore I have spoken. Pause. 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 Now. Whenever we open our mouth and we speak, do we speak what we believe? For example, a person got a bad report from the doctor saying he's got cancer. Right? So will he open his mouth and start saying that I got cancer or am I in good health? He'll say I got cancer. I'm asking you. He will say I got cancer. So that's what he believed, what the doctors gave him the report, and therefore he opens his mouth and speaks what he believes. Mm -hmm. yes. Is that right? Yes. yes. So we all, whenever open our mouth and we speak, it is what we believe. 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 In other words, what's running in our mind, that's what we believe. speak. Is that right? Yes. Yes, yes. Then, then. Which that same spirit of faith so I spoke because I believe with the same spirit of faith. Then we also believe and therefore speak. We also believe and therefore speak. Okay, now my question to you is, did Jesus open his mouth and speak? Yes. 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 So when he saw a sick man, did he open his mouth and speak the word to heal him or he just healed him? He just opened his mouth. No, he never healed him just like that. He, he always mouth. opened his mouth. I'm sorry for being aggressive uh, because some things I'm very aggressive. So please pardon me. Praise God. Okay. He never healed anybody without speaking the word. Did God open his mouth and speak the word when he created the heavens and the earth? Yes. Yes. So he believed and therefore he spoke. spoke. Now did God speak by faith or just by sight? By faith. By faith. Did he see darkness in Genesis 1? Yes. yes. Did he see the earth was white? Yes. yes. Did he see the earth was formless? Yes. But did he speak what he saw or did he speak what he wanted to see? He wanted to see. So when he spoke what he wanted to see, was it faith or was it sight? Faith. 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 Now my question to you is, in your everyday life, what do you speak? Do you speak what you see or do you speak what you want to see? Hey, come on, don't give you oral right. But in your day-to-day -day life, what do you speak? Let's be honest. We are all over here who have made mistakes, but you have come here, and the Holy Spirit is a teacher who wants to teach us the truth. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, so don't think I'm perfect. I'm also in the same school with you, and I'm only speaking what God wants me to speak to you. Okay? I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm just like you, a student. He is perfect. Okay, quick, quick question. Did God speak what he saw or did he speak what he desired to see? What he desired to see. You and I, what do we speak? What we see. What we see. So when you spoke what you saw, did you speak faith or did you speak sight? Sight. So if you spoke sight, will you get anything from God? No. No, good. Is that clear? Yes. So now, what am I supposed to do from now on? I have to learn to speak Faith and not sight. Now, when God spoke the word, did he use faith? Yes. Yes. So, in other words, faith is a supernatural divine power of God that is able to do or that is able to create physical things. And this power gets activated when God opened his mouth and spoke 
the world. I've got a cable here, right? Now, can this cable also uh, get connected to the electric power? And will the electric power flow? Yeah, because yes, there's metal inside. But on the on the surface, it's plastic, plastic or rubber, whatever. So this is a bad conductor. Inside is the conductor, and the current will flow. Are you following? Yes. In the same way, my word can be a bad conductor or can be a good conductor. When I speak by sight, I just spoke a bad conductor. So the power of God does not move. I spoke by faith. Now, my word is a good conductor. It carries with it the power of God. Is that clear? Yes. Hello, is that clear? Yes. So in a given day of today, and you spoke thousand words, how many words did you speak of good conductor and how many words did you speak of bad conductor? Uh, the word always speak by conductor, everybody. Sorry? The, the world is speak by conductor. I'm not talking about the world, I'm talking about you. Yeah, me, I'm, I'm interested in me and you. I am part of the world, so I, am, I speak by conductor. Bad conductor. So if you spoke bad conductor, you will receive anything from God? No. 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 Is that clear? Yes. Is that clear? Yes. So for me to get connected to God, do I need a connector? Yes. yes. Now, do I need a wire to connect this? Yes. The connector that I use to connect to God is God's word. So God's word is always a good conductor. Wow. Are you understanding? Yes. And all those things that you see, which are your problems, are words, but they are contradicting <coughs> to God's word, and therefore they are bad conductors. Is that clear? Yes. So when I'm talking to God, am I talking to God good conductors or bad conductor? Bad. Are you sure? Sometimes good. Hey, come on, come on. Are you sure? Given a thousand words, and you spoke, forget about a thousand words, fifty words, and you're talking to God. How much word did you speak what is in the Bible? And how much word did you speak what is your problem? So most of the time, are you speaking good conductor or bad conductor? Are you, are you following? Yes. Thank God. We are, we are understanding some things. Yes. Okay, okay. Now, are you created in the likeness and image of God? Yes. Yes. So are you like God? Yes. Yes. You are God? No, I'm not God, but I'm like God. So if God spoke the word and created the world and I am like him, how will I create my future? Again, again, again. If God spoke the word, which is spiritual, you can't see my word. It is spiritual. But by the spiritual word, he, he created physical things. Do you need some physical things in your life in the future? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So for those physical things to come into your life, do you need words? Yes. Yes. Now, if you are created in the likeness and image of God, are you supposed to be creating things in your life just like he created? Yes. 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 So now, what should be your focus to change any physical thing? To change our the speech of God. God. So if words created for me, Words also can destroy me. Yes. Are you following? Yes. Now, how did uh, Satan deceive Adam and Eve? By words. Good. Now, did he speak God's word? No. 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 He spoke words which looked like God's word, but they were opposite to God's word. Now, did Adam and Eve receive those words? Yes. Yes. When they received those words, did they go against God? Yes. The moment they went against God, all those things God had created for them, were they now connected to those things for them? No. No. Now, what came into them? Sin. Things, sin came, but what came into them? Things that were against them became their life. So when there was health, now came sickness. When there was connection with God, now came separation. Where there was life for all eternity, now came death. Where there was joy, there came sorrow. Where there was blessing, there came cursing. How did the shift take place? The shift took place when the words 
started shifting. Did you get this formula right? Hello. Yes. Yes. So the moment you believe that you are like God and you are the co-partner with God, then from now on, are you going to give extreme importance to the words you speak? Yes, of course. Yes. yes. Because the words that you speak can create things for you in the future and the words that you speak can create extreme destruction in your life. Now God is saying, it is written since we have the same spirit of faith. Paul is writing this and saying, since we have the same spirit of faith. Are you going brother? I want your operation done, then only you please go. Okay, let's go. He has got a problem in his spine and he, there's a gap, right? Yeah. There's a gap and today we are going to fill in the cement in his spine so that the gap is filled. Wow. wow. And it's a special cement which is formed by words that we speak. Yeah. A word can create the earth. Can the word now create a new bone for him? Yes. yes. Good. You are understanding. So yes. any physical thing that I want to create, do I need a raw material? Yes. Yes. And what's the raw material? Word. The word. Is that clear? Yes. Sure. Yes. So now, do you have the raw material inside of you? Yes. yes. I don't know. No. I don't know. If you have not opened the Bible and you don't spend with the seed, which is the word of God, and plant it in your heart and speak it out of your mouth, then you can come here and go out of the door and start speaking the same stuff that you spoke before coming in. Your result will still be the same. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now St. Paul is saying that he has found a secret. And he's saying, when I was Saul, I had a desire to serve God, but I did not know how to serve him. And I was actually persecuting the church. But then on my way to Damascus, I encountered Jesus. And I said, when, when I encountered Jesus, I said, who are you? And he said, I'm Jesus of Nazareth. And, and he said, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I'm Jesus of Nazareth. The first question. The second question I asked God was, Jesus was, what do you want me to do for you? Right? When we come to Jesus, what do we ask Jesus? Do we, do we ask Jesus, what can I do for you? Or do we ask Jesus, what can you do for me? And that's why we all our life keep struggling, what can you do for me? Because we have not understood what he has already done for us. Okay? Now he's saying, St. Paul is saying, when Jesus spoke words, he spoke by the spirit of faith. Yes. So in, his, in other words, he spoke the word and the spirit of faith got the job done. Amen. Are, you, are you following? Yes. So what was Jesus' job? To speak the word. To speak the word. Now, did he speak his word or did he speak the Father's word? The Father's uh, word. Now, how did he get the Father's word? By a good, yeah, connection. Huh? good connection. Not good connection. Good no, not good connection. He had to study himself <laughs> the word. And that's why the Bible says when he was a child, he began to study the scriptures and God's favor was on him. So, if Jesus had to learn scriptures, do we also have to learn scriptures? Yes. Now Jesus by the age of 12 had mastered the scriptures so much that he could challenge all the top doctrines of the scriptures in the temple. Are you following? Yes. So with the scriptures came what? Faith. So the spirit of faith got the job done. So the Bible is saying the same spirit of faith that God used for creation, the same spirit of faith that Jesus used on this planet earth, the same spirit of faith Jesus gave his apostles and the same spirit of faith is resting on each one of us. Wow. Oh my God. 
Can you say to yourself, it is written? Okay, write it down. As Christians, if you can get your mobile, just, you're, you're, oh, you're not smart. You're not saying, I'm not only going to write, I'm going to do the whole recording. God bless you. As Christians, we have the same spirit of faith. As Christians, we have the same spirit of faith in us can you narrow it down even the mixer and everything is shown yeah thank you as Christian we have the same spirit of faith in us that was in Jesus that was in Jesus when he ministered on earth when he ministered on earth. And so we can expect, and so we can expect The force of mountain moving faith, the force of mountain moving faith to work for us, to work for us like it did for him, like it did. For him. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Did you get that? Yes. yes. Hello? Hello? So is it settled? Yes. So if Jesus spoke the word and it worked, the apostles spoke the word and it worked. When you and I speak the word, will it work? Yes. yes. So are you supposed to work hard or the spirit of faith is supposed to work hard? Spirit of faith is supposed to work hard. All this time, who was trying to work hard? Us, me. So what's your working hard? Your working hard is your fight that you go through in your mind. When you get worried, your mind is full of what? Worry. The word of God. Very good. Worries. Yeah, what is worry? Is it the word of God or things opposite to the word of God? So are you filled with the promises of God or the problems that comes from the devil? So what's your fight? How many of you believe you have to fight Satan? That's where you went wrong. God never wants us to fight Satan. That's why he sent his son Jesus who fought Satan and defeated him. Now what's my, my fight every day in my life? It's not against Satan. It's against his suggestions that he gives in my mind. 
Your fight is not outside. Your fight is inside. The thoughts that contradicts God's word. You fight it and bring those thoughts to obedience to Christ. You are always a winner. Yes. You, you, you don't fight. You don't fight or, or you, or you, or you uh, get thoughts contradicting to the promise of God. You are always a loser. Hello? Yes, yeah. Oh, this is something new to you. I like the way you looked at your partner, the sister. She looked at her and she did. Mm. <laughs> now just think, when you're worried, okay, you got thoughts full of things contradicting to God's word. Do you open your mouth? Yes. Do you speak the words of your worry? Yes. When you spoke words of worry, did you activate life or death? Death. So when you spoke death, will anything from life come? No. no. Now who gave you those worries? The devil. So he is he going to come and touch you? He can't touch you. Because you are a child of God. But he also knows, if I can put those thoughts in their, in their mind, and get those thoughts out of their mouth, then they are now not creative words, but destructive words. Yes. The Bible is an incorruptible seed, which has creative power. Hallelujah. In the same way, the devil is a deceiver. When he will receive his words, his words are destructive power. Let me give you an example. There was a person who was extremely healthy. Okay. He went to the doctor every year for his routine test. And the blood test was taken. And during the blood test, the person who took the test made an error. The label that he had to stick on the tube of the blood sample, he stuck somebody else's name and somebody's health name got exchanged on his tube. Now when the report came, was it his own report or somebody else's report? Somebody else's. But does he know it? No. no. So the report came, he got blood cancer. Now does he really have blood cancer? No. So when the doctor looked at the report, he said, you're suffering from blood cancer. Will he report? Will he believe the report? Yes. Yes. How many times in a day is he going to think about blood cancer? All the time. How many times is he going to speak? All the time. After one week, what happened to his good health? He will be gone. He will the sickness. Can you now understand? Yes. The thoughts, the negative thoughts, have a hold on him. Now his body is getting weaker and weaker and even sick. His health is gone for a toss. So please, please remember, Satan's tool to destroy you, he is going to give you only one thing called thoughts. So are you supposed to fight Satan or are you supposed to fight thoughts? Fight thoughts. So who is your enemy? The enemy is outside or inside? Inside. inside. Good. Now, if you, not, not if, you have the spirit of faith. Okay. But did you keep the spirit of faith active or passive? I don't know. Has anybody ever seen a television? Yeah. There's yeah. one person. Thank God. <laughs> uh, have you got a television? No. You never got? <laughs> But have you seen one? I'm Hello, yes. that's why now do you understand why I'm asking? Yeah. You all thought it's a silly question. Because we Christians don't have television at all. <laughs> <laughs> now now my question to you, you got a television. Yes. Is it on twenty-four hours? No. no, it is off. And might be now you put it on. Now, do you have the option to select the channels? Yes. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Mm -hmm.